everyone. Hey everybody, look who's back. Welcome, welcome. And uh, yeah, indeed, I am back guys. So uh, I'm Ja, and for those of you who don't know me well, I've actually been away for like two months now, I guess, from the live stream, I mean. Um, Feels like a very long time. Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, of course, there were some uh, complications with uh, the lovely coronavirus. So uh, when I got back from my vacation, unfortunately, I had to stay home away from my uh, lovely colleagues. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, Ja went to uh, visit his family over the yeah. uh, Lunar <clears throat> New Year, which is traditional, right, for a lot of Chinese people. You yeah, got exactly. to see family, so very nice. Uh, and then, well, yeah, stuff happened. Exactly. Shit happens all the time, right? But luckily, Ja's okay. Mm. He's back. Yeah. And so, uh, exactly. he's so, here for you guys uh, today to, show, to show off his guns, of course. I mean, you already saw some questions about I lost about a lot him. of weight, so uh, uh, let's just wait, not wait, talk wait, about while, that. While you were in quarantine, you weren't allowed to work out? <laughs> yeah, well, I was allowed to work out, but I wasn't allowed to go out and get food. Ah, oh, so, you, so, so you, you only, you know, you lost weight because you were working yep, out so much? Yep, yep, yep. But nothing to uh, Nothing to, to supplement. Yep. Damn it. Yeah, that's a bad, bad deal. You know what they say? Muscles are made in the kitchen for 70%. I thought they said the muscles from Brussels, but I don't know. Oh yeah, that, that, that one's true too. But of course, we're not here to talk about muscles. No. And uh, so, all right, guys. Today um, is my first live stream again in two months, so I hope I'm going to do a great job for you guys and we're going to have a lot of fun. And more of all, we're going to talk about how you can upgrade your old infinite model. But besides that, we'll also give you tips and recommendations and you can ask all the questions you want in the chat regarding how you can upgrade your old PC. So if yep. you had an excellent 1080p gaming PC like the uh, infinite 7th uh, generation or even the 8th generation, some uh, lower specs, you can expect to see what you should upgrade, how you should upgrade, and you know what kind of mistakes you should avoid. And so, yeah, if you have any questions, post them in the chat. And in the meantime, you can already start with the giveaway, which is right here. So, um, <clears throat> per usual, we're going to give away uh, a lot of, well, a lot of few Steam uh, wallet codes. So, if yep. you want to have one of those uh, $20 Steam wallet codes, just go to msicom insider and perform a few actions. The more you do, the more chances you'll have at winning one of the codes today. Exactly. And as I can already see in the chat, uh, our bot is spamming the <coughs> link. Oh, so, yes. you can also go directly to the Gleam link. Uh, most of you guys will know how it works by now. Uh, you only have to participate once during the stream, um, and then you can perform several actions. The more actions you perform, the better your chance of winning. So, yeah, uh, make sure you you participate and uh, hope yes, you win. And good luck. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and soon we'll draw the first winner. Exactly. But before that, so um, we got a little bit of a list in, right here in between mm. us, right? So maybe yeah. maybe talk about that. So yeah, right here and yes. uh, this way. Uh, yeah. So we have the old model, which is uh, actually right now under the table. But I will get it up in a few minutes. But before yeah. that, uh, so this is the spec that you can expect to, uh, well, expect us to upgrade to today with the old Infinite 7th seventh, uh, uh, seventh generation model. Right. So if you have any questions uh, regarding the specs, um, well, there, there's actually something in an Easter egg for you guys to spot. And we're yeah. trying to see, you know, how much your technical knowledge. Yeah. There's something you know, about how, these yeah. specs. And, and something, yeah, something is Something's not, off. Something is odd and off. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. <clears throat> Exactly. So do your best and see uh, yeah. what is really odd about the spec scene. Maybe, maybe we'll, whoever guesses it, if we spot it in the chat, <clears throat> can maybe maybe we can a give, Steam give, code? A, give a code. I don't know. I'll say it's a, it's a democracy, see if you right? Guys can I see say it. yes. So, so this, just to be clear, guys, this is the build that it's going to be, uh, and it's mm -hmm. based on a uh, existing. Current yeah, an, an existing build, which is the, the Infinite 7th gen, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, actually, let me just get just, it up Just now. get it, yeah. So I'll try to put this on my side a little bit yeah. so you guys can still spot, uh, say, the spec sheet, right? Yes. Right. So this, uh, for those of you who don't know, is our Infinite 7th uh, generation uh, gaming desktop. Of course, there's, uh, well, there are quite a few SKUs and different kinds of models, uh, configurations. So depending on which one you have, you might have a different one. But before that, uh, let's get into you know what a market situation right now is because uh, we want to give you a bit more uh, background information regarding you know why we're trying to show you how to upgrade and why many people are trying to upgrade at this moment because right now you know the market is really well back in the days few years back you know 1080p gaming you know is really you know the the resolution to go you know the 1080p uh, setups and 
Well, actually, for the past two years, especially the last two years, it's been growing really hard, 1440p gaming. We had a stream a long time ago now, um, which was called 1440p yep. is the new 1080p. 1080p. Because, you know, 1080p was always the go-to resolution, you know, full HD, that's what you wanted, and, and all the games performed well on it. Uh, but we can see, indeed, pretty quickly, there's a shift going already for a long time towards 1440p, because one, uh, the graphics cards are getting more and more powerful, so they can handle that kind of resolution. And secondly, uh, it's becoming, um, well, more and more, uh, let's say, um, to a price point that's, yeah, doable. It's, it's, it's becoming... Uh, more towards a yeah a more affordable yeah. price point let's say and, you for know, good quality uh generally i think we wouldn't be surprised if you guys went out to the shops uh, or you know any uh, online stores and you see a lot of those big monitors you know <laughs> 27 inches 27 plus you know just yep. going all the way to 30 32 34 yep. ultra wide you know, you generally also see many more uh, offerings in that kind of uh, area. So monitors are getting bigger. And of course, with bigger real estate, you generally don't want to stick to 1080p because uh, stuff is going to look ugly uh, at some point in time. So preferably, if you want to go up in size, you also want to go up in resolution. So that's why you know, so many more um, monitors are coming out with uh, 1440p and many people are opting to upgrade to 1440p. That's, Correct. Yeah, generally where it's going. Yeah. So, so basically, what we thought we'd do for this stream is, you know, to take a, a case that's probably quite common. You have a, a PC that you bought a, maybe a couple of years ago, yeah. uh, which at the time was really great, and then for 1080p it served you quite well. And now, of course, with new games coming up, uh, Cyberpunk, for example, later this year, but all other games as well, are quite demanding, um, and it's kind of struggling a bit. I mean, 1080p it's still doing, but you want to move to 1440p. So then what do you do? Um, and how do you go about seeing if you really need to buy a full new system or if you can, in fact, uh, get enough performance uplift by upgrading your current system, uh, which is should be at least far less uh, expensive yeah. to do. And, uh, you know, Peter just mentioned Cyberpunk. You know, Cyberpunk is, of course, one of those games that's going to look so incredible with, you know, the, mu uh, the, the more details you can get yes. on your screen, the more you're going to enjoy and really, you know, immerse yourself with the gaming world. So that's also, I think, uh, personally, one of the benefits of having more yep. pixels on your real estate, on your uh, gaming monitor. Correct. So that all the AAA title games that look beautiful will just really, really pop out on your screen. So I think that's also one of the reasons why people are trying to, you know, really go to uh, 1440p to enjoy more of the details of the environment, how the games look. And that's just one of the perks of, you know, how games are keep, keep getting better and better visually. And I personally also do like it a lot. And of course, if you are a competitive esports games player, that's going to be you know, kind of a different story for you. So yeah. you generally wouldn't be, you know, really uh, jumping around to go to uh, 27 inches and plus. You prefer you're trying to stick to 24, 25 inches because uh, the less, uh, you know, th the smaller your screen is, the better it is for you to track everything on your screen. So you don't have to move around too much with your eye. Yeah. So, you know, there are many reasons why eSports is still being played on uh, 24, 25 inches. Of course, for that, uh, it's, a, it's a different kind of story. But even then, you can still enjoy 4040p if you do opt to go to 27 inches. I mean, at the end of the day, it's still going to be more or less your own preference. So, yes. yeah. Um, so that's not a reason for you to not try, at least to see for yourself, how your uh, favorite eSports game works on 4040p or on 27 inches, for example. So, yeah, many games, many games to enjoy on the big screen with a lot of pixels yes. on your screen. Yeah. And, and I mean, you can still, even if you do play esports and stuff, you, you can uh, also get a 1440p monitor, uh, as long as it got, you know, like yeah. two, at least 144 <coughs> hertz or something, like high refresh rate, very important. Uh, and, but you can always scale it back to uh, 1080p. Problem is that most of these uh, 1440p monitors are indeed yeah. a bigger size. That's also generally not quite the chosen size for, for eSports, for competitive exactly, yeah, play. Exactly, yeah, that's also true. And I think I just spotted in the chat somebody uh, who spotted the mistake. I, I think, I'm not sure who was the first, so let me, let me quickly yeah, see. Yeah, I, think it was, I just started reading the chat, and uh, yeah, it, just like Peter it was, said, we're not sure if he was the first one to spot it. I think, so. I think it was Ed, Edwin, but I could be wrong here. 
Because a lot of people, yeah. you were, you, a lot of you were close, uh, saying, you know, oh, that uh, that processor One isn't compatible time. with the uh, with the, the memory with DDR4 uh, or or a certain DDR4 uh, spec. That's not really the point. The point was that indeed uh, the processor uh, it says it's an i7 7700, um, but it's supposed to be uh, an eighth gen. Yeah. Right. So, so 8700. Yes. And so uh, Edwin says uh, the the B three sixty M bazooka eight <laughs> and ninth gel in gen Intel. So that is correct. I I think uh, after that, quite quickly after that, uh, Arsen also noticed uh, seventh gen Intel with the three sixty M watt. So yeah, it was close. It was close. But I think uh, Edwin uh, Edwin had to beat. So um, I think mm. Edwin will uh, receive a code. Yeah, I think he's well. the, he was the first one who, who mentioned, who really said it's the it's the processor that's wrong in this setup. Good job, Edwin. I mean, yeah. uh, Edwin is one of the yeah, quite a, the, the frequent viewer. We see him a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we see him a lot. <laughs> yeah, Arrow's so, mind also got it. Okay, now we know what's the issue. Yep, there you go. <clears throat> All right, guys. Well done. Um, I'll need to uh, I'll need to write that down somewhere that we sent Edwin uh, Edwin a code. Um, I also don't know if we have his uh, if we have your contact details somewhere. Uh, we'll, we'll get it from uh, probably from from the system, uh, so we'll we'll look into it. But I'll make sure to make a note. <laughs> Either that, or we'll try to contact you um, soon. Yeah, Eric's trying to troll guys. Don't read the don't read the message coming from MSI Gaming. Okay. <laughs> fake news. Fake news. <laughs> fake news. <laughs> All right, so that's yes. that. You continue. I'll uh, exactly. I'll see if so I can find right it. here we have uh, the one of the old uh, infinite models. So many of the guys, uh, many of you guys might have uh, the seventh generation or the eighth generation. So the seventh generation, they uh, generally will come with a uh, i7 7700, so the non-K versions, and uh, with a graphics card up to 1080, uh, 1060. Sorry. Uh, if you go up to the eighth generation, you're speaking of you know whether it's the infinite eighth or the infinite a eighth, uh, you generally will have conf uh, configurations with up to like a 8700 uh, Intel Core CP uh, CPU with uh, GPU going all the way up to 1070 Ti. So depending on what kind of configuration you have, uh, it's going to be really interesting for you to uh, generally to uh, consider if you should upgrade to enjoy 1440p gaming, if that's what you're looking forward to. And even if you don't have like the infinite series, uh, if you just have a normal desktop with uh, from some other uh, random cases or brands or whatever, and you also are planning on and trying to upgrade, yeah. of course, this is still going to be very relevant for you because we're going to generally also give alternatives and tips and recommendations regarding what you should do so even though if your configuration doesn't look exactly the same yeah. but it's more or less in the same from the same year so the, the the most popular choices so it's still going to be beneficial for you to uh, well you still can ask questions so if yeah. you have anything that you are very uncertain of just ask us and uh, we'll try to uh, give all the answers that we have yeah and very often especially if you move up in resolution size um, what you will notice is that if you have <coughs> have a uh, relatively powerful like I don't know i7 or I don't know you know i7 ish maybe even i5 of a couple of years ago, eh, it probably will still get the job done because remember uh, yeah. when when uh, games get GPU limited, which means you know it's more demanding on a GPU, uh, the CPU will probably be a bit less strained. Um, that usually happens when you get very high FPS in CS:GO, for example. We try to get the highest amount of FPS. You go into the hundreds of FPS, that's where the GPU will become less of a bottleneck and it will be more down to the CPU to send all the, the information and draw calls for each single frame to the GPU to render. So then it becomes yeah. more uh, that you need GPU to have a bound. very powerful CPU, uh, single core speed and stuff like that. So um, a lot of the times your uh, older PCs might still be very viable to upgrade for something like 1440p if you mostly look at a graphics card, maybe some memory indeed can, can yeah. do. Um, storage can also still be a very major boost, of course. Um, the biggest boost was always when if you go from uh, a hard drive, hard drive like those were the actually days, the uh, spinning disk, you know, to, uh, the HDD to the drive, SSD. to an SSD, that's a huge difference. Uh, but today we'll also see, uh, I think, Jai, you've got something in, in front of the table here as well. Um, so we're going to upgrade from uh, one SSD to another. 
Yeah, I so know we're going to show you different kind of aspects of what yes. we're going to upgrade. And generally speaking, you know, uh, what you're trying to look forward to or what you're trying to achieve, you know, something uh, like the Infinite X right now that we have, which is our most top end PCs. Of course, something like this is really the ultimate, you know, 1440p Ultra gaming PC because, you know, what's inside, uh, it's being water cooled right now. Uh, you know, there's the Intel yeah. Core uh, i9, 9900K up to and uh in this configuration specifically we have the rtx 2070 but it also goes to 2080 2080 ti so you kind of have an idea you know of what was like the ultimate setup for those of you that are not very familiar with the hardware uh, aspect yeah uh, so before that uh we can uh, we will show you you know just what kind of hardware the gpu what uh, peter just talked about right so you want to upgrade to 1440p well the most important part if you have an adequate cpu is going to be the gpu because yes. it's going to be less cpu bound but gpu bound because of all the processing power coming well required from the 1440p performance so uh we have two graphs uh that we got from hardware info uh yeah, let's that will show you guys just what kind of uh, 1080p performance you are currently having and uh, how it places in the chart and yeah. what it's going to be like in 1440p environments and what and, you will need. And this is a, an average uh, that they do. So yeah. this was a recent benchmark. I believe this was part of the uh, RX 57, uh, 5600, excuse XT, me, yeah. uh, XT100 review. Um, so it's, it's fairly recent. Um, but this kind of gives you an average of, I don't know, like 15-ish games, I believe, they, they benchmark. Um, yeah, and, and it's a big because, average. Because it, it really depends per game, as you can imagine. You know, CSGO, again, it, it will depend mostly on, on your CPU, not even on your GPU. Uh, but if you play the latest games or Red Dead Redemption, that kind of thing, you know, that will be much more uh, GPU-oriented. Um, but that's why we take more like an average and and granted these are more games because it's a, a benchmarking test for graphics cards so these will tend to be games that are a bit more graphics intensive um, but this is just to give you some kind of an idea uh, what kind of performance you can expect yeah exactly at least on average yeah so i uh, just want to say to baltic seal thank you for answering the question for us because sometimes we're too busy to see some of the questions uh yeah so yeah the giveaway is international not oh, yes. just us bound so thank you baltic seal yeah uh, all right, so um, as you can see here in the chart, if you have like, for example, this in the Infinite Seventh uh, Generation, there's like a, a 1060 in there, and uh, 1060 for, six gig though. That's yeah. important to know because there's also a, there the was or is a three gig version. Yeah, that one will score quite a bit lower. So. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So uh, in that in, in that kind of situation, you can uh, try to you know transfer from this 1080, uh, 1060 up to something like a uh, 2060 Super that we're going to do today. So it's a big jump, but it's really going to make it so that's, proof. That's pretty much from almost at the bottom, just below the 60 FPS bar you see there, uh, all the way to the top. That's that's the performance jump we're gonna hope to achieve today. Yeah. And to be fair. Um, I think right today we're not going yeah. to actually fire up the PC and and, and um, show really, you that. Yeah. If that's something you want to see, you want to see uh, or, or get more information about, like after upgrading a PC, how do you actually make sure it runs good? You know, driver uh, updates, mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, clean sweep. windows and stuff yeah, like that, or, or clean installation, that kind of stuff. Uh, if you want to see more about that, let us know. We might actually be able to do a follow-up stream uh, to to cover those steps in more detail. Today we're just going to cover the uh well the choosing process right mm -hmm. so kind yeah. of what things to look out for and and then actually ja will show you guys how to <laughs> physically do it in uh well in this case or someone else i mean it's your choice so yeah we can you don't have to choose me may maybe we can get not, eric not, not in here with a exactly. blindfold exactly um, then i'm getting out because i don't want to get stabbed with a screwdriver <laughs> don't know about you <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no. and I think Mike and, and Eric were quite a good couple to uh, oh, tackle yeah. these kind of problems, right? So you don't have to mention me, but you can mention, you know, we want to see that, but please put Eric on. I'm sure he <laughs> loves to hear that too. Uh, I don't know, we can put awesome. up a poll again. Oh too. yeah, <laughs> we can, definitely. I mean, we don't even have to know the answer. The it's conclusion fine. is going to be fixed. We already know, yeah. yeah, it's rigged. Everybody always wants to see Eric somehow. Rigged I don't know why. Hell. I don't yeah. know what your guys' obsession with Eric is. I don't know neither, I mean. Yeah. Eric, Eric's quite happy with it, I have to say, so yeah. keep it up. He always says he's so <laughs> happy that everybody in the chat always asks for Eric. Yeah, so yeah. keep it up, guys. Yeah, yeah. He loves it. 
Nice. All right. Yeah, any question that we missed, maybe? Um, ba, 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 um, well, I have... something we're coming to, actually, indeed. This is what yeah. Edwin's asking. Uh, he has a power supply of 350 watts. Uh, he's asking if he can use the RX 5500, or is it possible to even use an RX uh, 5600? Uh, I believe you mean the XT, probably, for both variants. Um, well, excellent question. Yeah, you yeah. want to take this? Well, uh, we're going to uh, attack this GPU well in a minute, but uh, well, with a 350 watt, I mean, it also kind of depends on your CPU, of course. You know what kind of how, what kind of power your CPU requires. But generally speaking, if you're talking about XD versions, I will go with a bit higher than 3500. I mean, 350 watts. For yeah, it, it really depends. You can uh, you can usually check there's on our sure. website. Yeah, there's on our website. There's a the the specification. Look for the products that you. Are interested in um, yeah. and it will give you in the specifications uh, tab a rough guideline which is quite wide mm -hmm. basically so it, it still allows for a lot of headroom uh, for the other components because again you know it's yeah. not just a graphics it's card, just a graphics card it, it, it's your CPU it's your memory everything uses a bit of power uh, granted the thing that usually mo uses the most these days is a graphics card and uh, the CPU still uh, you want to be sure uh, sure and safe so for those models yeah I mean it will say on the website, but I'll I'll guess at least for the 5600 XT that will probably be more in the range of 450 or 500 watts ish, something like that. <laughs> yeah, I would expect. Um, to, uh, another question. Well, actually, it's a recommendation for uh, the follow-up on the question regarding what kind of idea we have uh, we should do for the live stream. So I think it's quite okay. We can do a live stream regarding how to optimize some kind of game, uh, some games, uh, in order to get higher FPS. Mm. That's uh, that's quite a fun topic, I think. Topic, I think. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, do you? But I mean, th that's very specific, right? Yeah. Some games. Which games do you mean? Because depending on the game title, it can really uh, change what you need to optimize. Again, yeah. great example is CS:GO. I've seen a lot of threads online, people asking, oh, "I just upgraded my graphics card to a well, I, I haven't seen this, but somebody maybe upgraded to a 2080 Ti and thought he would get that way higher FPS in CS:GO, but it didn't happen. Um, that's because it's more CPU bound. So yeah. this is the thing. Uh, I mean, if you have suggestions for which games you want, I mean, we can always take them, some of the more popular games or maybe some of the extremes mm. that really require different kinds yeah. of optimizations. And gen generally, I think I've seen the biggest uh, benefit in esports kind of titles where you get really get, uh, uh, well, gain a lot of uh, mini FPS yes. in the sense of optimizing. And in the AAA titles, you know, of course, you can do optimization, but by far not as big, well, the benefit is not going to be as big as mm. the eSport game titles. But uh, yeah, we can definitely think about it and see, you know, maybe do a poll sometimes uh, to see you know, what kind of games you guys would like to see us uh, optimize. Yeah. And I'm sure Eric would love to do that. All right. Mm. <laughs> uh, I see a very specific so, question. What is the largest graphics card you can fit in the Infinite case, 2080 Super or TI? Um, it well. <laughs> really depends on the model. Um, more about that later as well, I think. Yeah, but later I'll show you. Uh, that is actually why, we chose, the case, uh, why yeah. we chose this one, because indeed here you kind of have to mind uh, the space that you have available that fits in this case. So we'll show you that a little bit later. Yeah, so when I get to the, 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 the dedicated uh, GPU uh, upgrade, I'll yeah. also try to tell you guys well, what you should uh, pay, where you should pay attention to. Uh, all right, so getting back to the performance chart. Uh, so here you can see, you know, the, the most popular ones <coughs> nowadays, how they perform on 1080p. And if uh, you had like a 1060 Super, well, a 1650 Super or a 1060, and uh, you want to upgrade to 1440p, you can really see that on 1440p. Well, this is on Ultra, you know. Yes. They're really lacking behind in performance. So even if you tune, tune and tweak around, it's still not going to be uh, optimally performing yeah. on 1440p. And if you really want to enjoy 1440p, well, <laughs> this chart also more or less will tell you, you know, within this kind of, well, of course, if you have all the money in the world, you know, you can just buy the <laughs> most expensive CPU, yeah, the most expensive not? GPU. Yeah. You don't ever have to look at this kind of stuff. <laughs> but, you know, for most people, you know, also me and Peter, I, I think, right? Well, I, I, we, we love this kind of thing. We love messing around with hardware, seeing yeah. what we can get out of it. I, I would even be uh, tempted to say, you know, the, these are stock values. So that means, you know, based on... Uh, 
out of the box performance pretty much. So that means you know with overclocking you could probably get even a little yeah. bit more out of it, but you know so it, really it getting, won't be that much. Getting a little bit geeky, but uh, yeah. yeah, but that's us. You know that's yeah, our course. thing. Uh, but, but I think it's also most of people also want to you know get the most out of their uh, money, right? So the most yes. value out of your money. So and this is also more or less where you should look at if you don't want you know the the, the most expensive ones. So you still want to be adequately uh, performing uh, quite well. But <clears throat> not spending too much, so that's why uh, we're limited to these kind of uh, cards. Yes, and you can also expect if you had like what older generations, yeah. how they will perform right now in 1440p on average. So you'll need at least like a 5600 XT uh, yeah. if you want to have like a fluent gaming experience. And uh, so today we'll try to upgrade to RTX 2060 Super. Yes, and as you can see on that card, generally uh, on average it performs quite well, so way above yeah. uh, 60 FPS. So it should be quite safe for most yeah. games. And I think it's still within quite a good price range for you guys to consider if you truly want to, uh, you know, game on 1440p Ultra yeah. because yeah. it is not light on your GPU, so you should remember that. Mm -hmm. So uh, you can, you're not going to get away with 200 euros or dollars uh, for this. Probably not, unless you get yeah. an incredibly good deal. Yeah, or a used <laughs> product. But um, I, you, I usually don't trust these kind of cards, especially with all the mining going on. So uh, wow. yeah, so we try to tell you guys what you should really look at. All yeah. right. Yeah. So I think it's time for us to uh, really open up the PC and see uh, what it's about. Yeah. Um, and where, of course, where do you want to start? <laughs> <laughs> and let's see, in the meanwhile, if anyone has an interesting question out there. Maybe we can also do the first giveaway. I mean, we're about half, half yeah. an hour in. Definitely, so, definitely. Um, yeah, I will uh, just uh, get started with some screws and hope I don't lose them. I'll, I'll see if I can distract everybody from what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, so uh, to enter the giveaway, if you're just joined, uh, there's a link being spammed in the chat. If you can't see it, <clears throat> we advise you to go either to uh, Twitch or to YouTube, because there the link usually will show up most. Uh, some of the other platforms sometimes block links, so um, that's why you might not be seeing it. Um, so you go to the, the Gleam link or go to msi.com slash two slash insider to our website. Scroll down a little bit. There you should see a big red button that says participate in this week's giveaway. Um, then you have to perform a few actions and that'll be it for this stream. Then you're in uh, for the draw. So um, while you guys are doing that, and I see we already get a lot of entries, uh, let me quickly uh, all right, so select the first winner. one a winner. I'm not that fast. <laughs> let me see. <laughs> So it's an automated system that will randomly select a winner from all the entries that we get. And our first winner is it's Rinaldi. Congratulations. Congratulations, Rinaldi. We'll get the uh, $20 Steam code to you as soon as possible. All right then. So yes. I just unscrewed the side panel, so I'll try to show you guys. Uh, well. Of course, this uh, specific infinite model is with a uh, metal side panel. So, of course, you also have seen uh, infinite models with a tempered glass on the side. But in this kind of There's actually one right there. Yeah. So, <laughs> in these kind of situations, uh, you don't have to worry about upgrading right now unless you really want the best and you're not satisfied with like a 2070 or a 2080. You really yeah. want the TI. But so that's what we're talking about specifically about the older models. So within the case, you know, you might also have similar specifications even if you don't have this model. Yeah. So by the way, you might see some graphics card laying around here. We'll get to those a little bit later. For now, I'm just going to move them out of the way so Jack can maneuver. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> So Here this is uh, the inside of this specific uh, Infinite A model. This is from the eighth generation. And uh, do we need a close-up view of that? Yeah, let's go. Uh, let's and Here we for go. most of you, you might be thinking, hey, this is not like the usual site <laughs> you might <laughs> expect from opening a, a PC, a pre-built uh, or a custom build. So let me just uh, dive in a little bit regarding what you're seeing right here. So first of all, you might notice, hey, why is the graphics card standing upwards instead of lying horizontally, right? This is because in all of our pre-builds, we uh, integrate uh, vertically integrated graphics cards. This is because, uh, for, first of all, if you're like a LAN gamer, you move around a lot, this will ensure that no matter how heavy or big your graphics card is, it's always safely put in place because it's not going to wobble like when it's horizontally installed. And this way, uh, you can also 
when you have a tempered glass, see the beautiful TPU that you have inside, which I personally do prefer to. Yeah, we try to make them look good from the front, yeah. you know, so, so no normally most people will just see it from the back because, yeah. you know, you've got it upside down. And basically. if you're also facing down, it's kind of, you know, it's a, it's a shame yeah. to uh, yeah. not really Put all that it. effort into the front, but yeah. you don't see it. But in our pre-build, you do. Yeah, so for safety and for uh, strengthening, you know, the PCIe slot and not damaging the card and also aesthetically, uh, it's going to be pleasing when you have a good looking card. Now, second thing that you might notice is that, uh, what is this thing in the middle, right? <laughs> so let me show this you in the detail cam. It's really blocking all the way to uh, the back plate, the, yeah. the, the motherboard. So this is uh, this kind of system is uh, our silent storm cooling. So with this kind of system, we try to uh, eliminate well the well we try to diverge the heat coming from the CPU and the heat produced by your GPU and your power supply to try to separate them uh, separate them in different chambers. So in this case, you know the CPU has its own chamber all the way up here, a lot of room for it to uh, to uh, you know dissipate the heat, and then the GPU has its own chamber and then the PSU, what you actually don't see right here, but it's also being separated right here. by the lowers, uh, by the lowest it's, it's below, below this, this thing. Right. Yeah. So we have three chambers, one, two, three, yes. CPU, GPU, PSU. So that's what this thing is doing in the middle. Tying into that, I see a question, uh, JPSH is asking, how does it perform with airflow sideways? Actually quite good, because normally, as you could see, you know, if you, if you imagine the graphics card is in here uh, horizontally, with the fans facing downwards, and they will be pulling air from in the case, basically, into the graphics card, and then dissipating right. it into the case again. So you're, yeah. you're just getting like a, a loop of so air getting hotter and hotter in your case. But here you can see there's a, a mesh uh, grate here where the graphics card can just suck air straight from outside the case, which will usually be cooler. So that's actually quite a benefit there as well. So I hope that answers your question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, the thirdly, uh, thirdly, what you might notice is that uh, you're not familiar with this kind of cooler. Well, this is because uh, also depends on, you know, what kind of infinite model that you might have had. You might see a different kind of uh, cooler. This is our own, well, this is actually before we started selling our own uh, CPU coolers. And yeah. we had like custom made coolers for our own pre-builds. Uh, so not your average general uh, daily uh, CPU cooler you might see on the market. So yeah, uh, more or less, this is like the kind of uh, setup that you can expect if you open up the infinite uh, case. And if you don't know what they are, I hope now you do. Of course, I'm going to dive into more details, um, but for now, generally, this is what you see and can expect when you open the case. And, and your PC might look different, of course. Uh, this is the pre-built infinite system mm -hmm. from MSI. Um, so we chose this one as well because we want to highlight this one will, will uh, give us some challenges as well. You know, having a normal build where you mount your graphics card horizontally will actually usually allow you a lot more space and, and opportunity. Here you actually have an example of things you need to keep in mind and, and mind some, well, potential limitations. Yeah. So we, we thought that would make it a bit more interesting uh, for you guys also to watch to see, well, what happens when you, when you have to mind some limitations. Um, Daxin is saying no wires are messing up in between. Yeah, that's because uh, of the cable management. So even in our <laughs> pre-builds, we don't let the cables mess around. Yes. Well, cable management is always important. Yep. Uh, so, like we said before, um, the GPU in this case, in the particular case of upgrading to 1440p, is going to be most important. Now, when you're trying to, for example, uh, try, uh, upgrade the Infinite, uh, the Infinite series, first of all, what you have to do is before you start anywhere, um, is to try to get this uh, separation panel out of the way. And then you will have access to all the hardware that you might want to upgrade. So of course, if you don't have this, you don't have to worry about that part. <laughs> so um, let me just try to show you how you can get this loose in your, from your uh, older or old Infinite series. Okay, so you let have me, let me get for the, in the maybe yeah, so yes. First of all, there's one screw here on the side. Let me show you that. So here. There's one being this held the, That's in the place. first one that you have to take care of. So let me just do that right away. Uh, 
And really, guys, when you're uh, messing around your PC, always try to find a screwdriver that has a magnetic head. Yeah. That's going to <clears throat> save you a lot of trouble. Well, Jaws Infamous. <laughs> infinite? Infamous? <laughs> Infin <laughs> infamous, <laughs> yes. Infinitely infamous for. Uh, well, magically, and I, we really don't, sometimes really don't have any explanation of how it happened, but losing screws. Anyway. Um, really, guys, I think it just happened like once or twice. No, but nobody, the, the nobody, guys, the guys keep saying like every time when I try to do something, it's... Uh, this, this one jar put down there, you didn't see me remove it. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that was the first one, and this one is the second one. See, I, didn't, I don't lose it. They magically get, get taken away from exactly. me. Exactly. So now you have two screws loose, and then I'll suggest you to continue here while you're. Uh, I can, uh, wait, here, here, here. Can't really see from this angle, but this is the third one that you have to loosen. Yeah. And you can quite easily identify them by, you know, if you, if you would still don't know that that one still has to come out, you can still, you know, you can try and jiggle the, uh, the plate out quite carefully though. Uh, and then you'll notice that it's still fixed somewhere and you will see that at the same height that Ja just removed the screw That's actually the height where this yeah. uh, the plate is also connected uh, to the back plate. Yeah, so really if you just take a look inside uh, It's going to be uh, quite logical and you will know what yeah. kind of steps that you have to take Yeah, so then the last one is inside uh, Which is being screwed into the side well the back panel. That's a lot of light <laughs> And after this, you're free to rip it off, but you have to be very careful because uh, there's a big PCIe extension that's sticking through it. I like, I like the way you phrase that. You can so, carefully rip it off. Yep. <laughs> can still be very, very aggressive, but you have to be careful about it. Yes. Uh, well, of course, don't be aggressive. Always be very careful. Well, first thing before you re uh, really fully remove the side panel is... Uh, you can only see, by the way, it's, it is detached now, right? So you can yeah. completely... So when you it. loosen it and just like let it down a little bit, yeah. you, can have, you will have the space to remove the PCIe uh, extension. Of course, just like with how you will remove a graphics card from PCI PCIe slot, you have to put the hinge down. down. So the, I'm trying Ooh. not to touch the motherboard. I, I, I don't recommend you do this with a screwdriver. No, I'm, I'm far away from the motherboard. Okay, so good, good. So it's it okay. looks, I'm looking I'm at just, the camera, what you guys are seeing, and it looks kind of like, yeah. no, no. There's like this much space between the screwdriver and the, mo and the motherboard. So guys, it's okay. okay. I'm not Eric. <laughs> so somewhere there I'm trying to show yeah. you is the hinge that you yes. have to push, right? So don't try to use a screwdriver. No, at, please oh, don't do I it. I think actually Eric has actually done this before with his own motherboard at home. Probably. When he, when he was trying to reach yeah. something and then he scratches motherboard with the screwdriver. I think so, yeah. And that's usually not <laughs> recommended. No. So uh, in this case, you know, you have a lot of space, so just use your hand and push down the hinge. Uh, let me see where it is. Oh, it's, yeah, got it. Yeah. You can usually feel it, then push it, push it down and then... Yeah. So now try not to really, uh, you know, pull on this, uh, let's say, what kind of this ribbon because yeah. you might accidentally rip it off yeah. of the, the actual uh, the actual PCB uh, piece that's sticking into the card, uh, the slot. Be careful. So try to reach the card itself, the PCB piece by hand. Yeah. And gently pull so it out. And then put it out. See? There you go. Now I have removed the extension and now all you have to do is just carefully push this back uh, from... Or just pull out the, the plastic thing. Yeah. Yes. Let's say the panel. There we go. Right. Step one. <laughs> so that's done. Now you have all the room to do whatever you want to do first. So since the CPU is really screaming like uh, replace me, let's just start with the GPU. I mean, did I say CPU or GPU? You said CPU. But okay. I meant GPU. <laughs> It sounded, I saw that I did say CPU, yeah. So, mm. of course, first uh, remove the power cord, so the power connector. Some cars will have more than one. Yeah. So. And like, I, like we said, guys, when you're trying to upgrade a GPU, there are quite a few things that you do have to think about. So, first of all, with this kind of setup, if I turn this on the side, you will see that, you see, it's quite close to the side panel, right? Yeah. So you got to make sure that whenever you're trying to upgrade, so in this case, uh, we're trying to upgrade to the RTX 2060 uh, Super for our gaming X series. 
this one is this uh, well this one still fits if you uh, stick it in uh, vertically so we make sure that this one isn't too big yeah. but when you're trying to upgrade of course for example we, if we you can are, show it later I mean yeah if you let me quickly just put the pull this this is a uh, 5700 XT and you can tell it's quite thick right it's got really it's thick, thick. Heat sink. but here you can see it's this uh, this bracket here there's two slots and two slots is what you have in room uh, before it actually bulges out from the side which means you can't close the side panel so that means clearly this this is like almost three slots thick right so this won't fit it will fit in length for example as you can see that this would fit in the case in length and if you would leave the side panel off you could probably get away with it uh, but if you want to close the side panel which is recommended to keep the chambers and, and the airflow uh, separate, um, then you won't be able to do it with a card uh, that is this thick. So compared to the card that's in there, uh, this, 20, this is a 2060 Super. And as you can see, this is a 2060 Super. That, that one is, well, two slots and, and just a little bit. But apparently it's just little enough that it's possible to do it. We have another card here and I, if, correct me if I'm wrong here, but is this the uh, 2080 Ti? Yeah. I saw this question here as well, people <coughs> asking uh, if they can do that. So the 2080 Ti, as you can see, is also, uh, I think, just a l might be just a little bit too thick. Well, uh, the Fantas card actually uh, fits in there right about the same as the Gaming X right. from this, uh, the 2060 Super. So, so you I might be able to get away with it. Tested that, so okay. for the Fantas, you're still safe, but uh, yeah. in this case, so this is the Ventus, well, of course. if you have the money for it, I mean, uh, you can try to upgrade to a 2080 Ti uh, Ventus. But if you are a bit tight on budget, um, the 2060 Super is a great option. Yes. Yeah. And I mean, there are other things to com consider, yeah. right? You already so mentioned something yet. about the power supply. Yeah. Um, if you, if you want to upgrade to something like, say, a 2080 Ti, you're going to need a hell of a lot more uh, powerful of a power supply. Yeah, so in this case, uh, the first thing that you can, uh, you know, try to do to eliminate this kind of option is to just simply by looking at the PCIe power connector. So in this case, we have a 6 plus 2. So which means the max, uh, well, let's just take the 2060 Super as an example. This one has an 8-pin power connector. So this is like really the max that this particular PSU uh, is, is able to handle so that's one and the second of course let just like Peter mentioned you got to make sure that when you're trying to upgrade a very powerful uh, or upgrade to a very powerful GPU you got to make sure that your PSU is actually able to handle the, uh, you know, the wattage being drawn from yes. that card so in this case we have like a 550 uh, bronze PSU so uh, with the 2080 Ti paired up with its uh, 8700, I was it's really tight. Yeah. So to leave yourself with a bit more headroom for uh, you know any future upgrades eventually or even overclocking stuff like that, I wouldn't recommend to try it. So when you're doing this for your own custom build too, you gotta make sure that you do your homework to not just blindly purchase stuff that you think looks good in your case or works well in your build. You really gotta make sure that it actually works. Yeah, the specs so, match up, the size, uh, the connectors as Josh said. In this case, it's also worth mentioning that um, a lot of power supplies these days are what, what's called modular, which yeah. means you can you know, connect or disconnect uh, cables like this or, or power cables for uh, uh, hard drives and stuff like that or optical drives. Um, on this particular case, uh, and I'm not sure if we'll get to see the, the power supply underneath, I, I don't think so. No. But I can already tell you it's not modular. No, so that this means not modular. Exactly. So that means what Ja just mentioned, this is, uh, this is what you have to work with. So it's a single 8-pin uh, connector, and that's it. So whatever model you want to put in here, make sure it doesn't have more than one 8-pin, because it ha if it does, you're probably going to end up disappointed because your graphics card probably won't work. Yeah. So just make sure you do your homework beforehand. Yes. Now, okay, so um, we have removed the power connector. Um, let me see. So in this case, you know, usually you will mount your GPU with an extra screw that will tight uh, this part. But in this case, because we had like the side and some cooling panel in the middle, it this little side hinge panel thing already pushes down the car so it won't move. So because we just removed it, this one is now loose. Yeah. So you can just wiggle the GPU out safely. Again, don't do it too, with, uh, with too much power. 
be careful with it. Yeah. So now we have removed the old uh, 1070. 1060, right. <clears throat> well, that's in the seventh generation, but ah, this particular model is right, actually the eighth gen. Ah, yeah. okay, so it's a 1070 actually. Yeah. So, and uh -huh. as we as we saw in the cards previously, the 1070 is still lagging behind in performance. You know, below 60 FPS. So even with this kind of model, 1070 was back and it was a great card, but yeah, nowadays yeah. if you want to play 1440p, you will need this kind of bad boys. So now we have everything removed. We'll try to insert the new uh, GPU. Well. So let me just show you how, for those of you wondering how this works, is that here, you see, we have installed a... Wow, the camera's going derpy. Well, <laughs> <laughs> let me see if this works. All right, so here, in uh, all the way down here, there's like an extra extension piece that we installed in order for the GPU to stand or stick in. So hence why this one is going to extend into the existing uh, PCIe slot on the motherboard. So, oh. all right. So let me now just install the 2060 Super. So you have to make sure that you really align the graphics card's PCB piece inserting into the uh, the slot. So from here, I have a quite a good view for that. So after that, make sure that this one is up. Well, the side panel, so you can put in the GPU. Yeah. And then after that, you will have to gently wiggle in. Uh, your GPU. All right. Until you can feel it. Yeah. When, when, it, when it slides in, you can really feel like the, uh, the, uh, small, but it's kind of resisting. Yeah. So you can find, feel some kind of resistance when you're trying to push it in. Um, so let me just confirm because I'm in quite an awkward situation oh. while I'm standing. Huh. So I got to make sure that. Well, this one has an extra. Um, yeah. Difficulty setting. Right, so or now it's in. Not quite. If you look at the back, this is actually where oh, you can also see yeah. it's. It has like two the, the two teeth basically at the bottom of the graphics card. You need to be seated also there in a yeah in a metal part. Yeah. So it's it, yeah I you have it. to kind of. So let me yes. just turn around and show you what Peter meant. Yes. These things. So yeah. when Ja was just seating the cart, um, these were actually there's a there's a black uh, piece of metal here that's actually you know you have to push it in between this part and the part that's behind here, um, and these black parts were actually still uh, in front of uh, one of the two. So that's how I could see that it wasn't seated correctly. So now it's being ins now it's got inserted. So make sure that you just reconnect the power connector. So like we said before, this is a six plus two, so you just have to squeeze them together. There's like a logical alignment on this, so you can't really go wrong with it. <laughs> and then just push it in. Uh, other way around with the oh, yeah. clip. <laughs> it, it is kind of like Lego at, at some point, because you, you can't really, unless you use excessive force, it's hard to, to yeah. Put, put it in the wrong way. It's a Lego for uh, grown-ups. Uh, kind of, yeah, with, with really cool results as well, once you get it right. Uh, yeah. Really cool <clears throat> performance. So when you push it in, you feel this kind of click. Yes. And voila, it's connected. So now, before I actually reverse engineer the, uh, the silence or cooling panel back in, we're uh, going to show you how you can upgrade the other parts because uh, it's kind of like <laughs> now we still have the room. Yes, exactly. So as you can see, the GPU is now quite firmly in place, even though this one hasn't been firmly installed yet because um, the panel has to be uh, inserted. So let me just gently put this away so we can have a better feel of the inside. Um, all right, let me grab something. So. Here, you can see right behind this little ribbon is the M.2 slot. Maybe you can slot. move it a bit closer if you want. Yeah, but just, I just move the PC a bit closer. It's going to get too white, maybe. There you go. So All right. Below the ribbon there? Yeah. So there you see like a blue little car thing. This so thing. that's where you can, uh, right now, we have the uh, Intel Optin 16 gigabyte installed. So this will really speed up your drive. And you can replace this with like, uh, we have here, we're going to show you 
uh, the NW2 NVIE from uh, Western, Western Digital, which is 500 gigabytes uh, version. So we can use this one instead and take out the Optin one. Yep. So actually doing this is really simple. Uh, if you haven't never done it before, it just really takes two steps. Well, step one is unscrew the one single screw that's on the, uh, on the end of it. And once that's loose, you actually have, uh, you practically have a free game of just getting yeah. it loose and putting in a new one. Little uh, point of advice though, it's a really tiny screw. Yeah. So that's so also why you saw Josh switching from the uh, bigger screwdriver head to the smaller one. Yeah, because that one is not going to work. Yeah. And especially in this kind of cases, if you don't have like a ma magnetic head on your screwdriver, yeah. you're going to be screwed. Yes, literally. Yeah. <laughs> Pun intended. But um. <laughs> So it's loose and it's not like the easiest to reach from this kind of position. So let me just make a bit of room for myself. Very often what you can do is just put it flat, right? So if you want, you can do that now. We also yeah. have a top cam view. Let's just do that. There we go. There you go. So we just unscrew, how? yeah, there we go. Right here. We just unscrewed it and now we just got to make sure to let me just use both hands, it's easier. You have to gently take it out. If you hear something breaking, <laughs> it's yeah. not a sound effect. <laughs> yeah. Anyone notice how he's not grounded through the static going to those components? That's actually a really good point, uh, Kyle. So. Although uh, these days, being uh, static, yeah, I can switch back to the detailed cam if you want. So this one came out. Being this statically loaded is actually not such a big problem anymore. Uh, most of our components or motherboards um, have, well, yeah, pr a protection layer against static. Um, I think it was uh, in during our tour, we also had um, uh, a lab in our HQ, which is actually testing for static electricity. Um, so for this specific purpose to see if it damages components if that would happen. It's an ESD protection layer, electrostatic discharge. Um, so our components are actually uh, protected against that, most of them. If you are unsure, however, or you're kind of worried about it, you can always uh, make sure indeed either you're grounded or what we usually also recommend is just touch an unpainted part of your case, which is unpainted metal. That will usually uh, at least balance out the load, so it, you, you won't have a different static charge compared to anything that's in the in the PC. So that will usually also do the trick. All right. <clears throat> so we took out the uh, Intel Optin one, and now we are going to install the uh, M.2 SSD. So a lot of benefit with these kind of drives uh, if you're still on uh, hard drives or even uh, SSD 2.5 uh, inches. Because in this case, first of all, you don't even have a cable that's connecting it to it. So this one really goes directly onto the motherboard uh, with one screw that's going to tighten it up. And of course, depending on what kind of generation you're going to upgrade it to, Gen 3 or uh, Gen 4 is right now is the newest, which is the fastest. Uh, really, the speed on there is like crazy. I think with the best one, you can reach up to 4.5 gigabyte per second. We had a stream, uh, was it yeah, last it was week? Last week. Yeah, I think it was last week. Last Mike week. Uh, did a creator's live yep. stream, and with, I think with Martin from yeah. AMD, you can uh, get all the info there too. Yep. Yeah. Um, so if you want to know more about that, you can always watch last week's stream. Yeah. So right now we're going to install the 500 gigabyte version, and it's really easy. Um, if I show you guys right now, for those of you that just missed it, it's going to be if we switch the fuel. Sorry, which one? Uh, yeah, the detail one, we so we can show you, because, uh, let me grab something. Yep. So Don't worry, I'm not going to touch the motherboard. <laughs> so, yeah, here we see sc screw uh, three like holes. Yes. That's where the card will going to be placed against, and this is like the connector right here, where I'm pointing at, this vertical little thing. Yeah. That's where you stick it into. So everyone, you can put it down again. Yeah. Go back to the top view. Insane speeds indeed. So M.2 drives indeed have, uh, especially for, for larger files and stuff, uh, they have really high speeds, uh, much higher than any uh, SATA drive can do. Yeah. 
So that's the biggest benefit also of the uh, M.2 drives. So of course, a lot of people will be saying or uh, thinking like, ha, huh, if you are like a content creator, that's going to be awesome. But for gamers, there are also benefits. So like, especially games nowadays, you know, they're getting huge. Like Call of Duty was like, what, 120 gigabytes? Something like that. Yeah. yeah. So you can imagine if you're installing that on your hard drive and you're loading games or loading maps, loading servers, or anything that's that's like uh, that has anything to do with loading, you're going to have a bad time on a hard drive or even SSD. Yeah. So even for gamers, you know, there are uh, there's still like a very big uh, benefit for you to have like optimum speed when you're operating uh, the Windows and when you're gaming. So it's that easy, uh, I, st I stuck it in and then screwed it back and uh, voila, you have installed your drive. Yeah. Does it affect the Lotus as well? I mean, Jad kind of just mentioned that as well. Um, yeah, it, it does. Uh, although I've seen tests where uh, a SATA SSD, which is relatively quick, or an M.2, I mean, it's it does make a difference, but not as big as, for example, uh, going from a hard disk drive, an HDD with the spinning disks, to any kind of SSD, that, that is the biggest jump. So yes, uh, and it also again depends on the games. Um, but you can imagine a lot of these games have high res texture, especially when you're playing at higher resolutions. These texture packs are becoming bigger and bigger, and, and that's you know constantly has to be uh, transferred to the GPU, to the VRAM, and stuff like that. So you can imagine that there's a lot of loading and preloading going on there constantly. Exactly. So it does, yeah. Yeah. So uh, of course, a important thing is that after you have in installed a new drive uh, with this one, especially, you should definitely put your Windows install on that one because that's the fastest drive in your PC build right now. And of course, uh, you might be thinking, okay, what do I do now? Because do I have to uninstall? Well, throw in my old Windows. Do I have to? How do I transfer stuff to my new uh, drive? Or there are a lot of tools and softwares out there to help you with cloning drives, so you can uh, really clone like your existing existing drive to uh, your new drive. So say you have like an uh, SSD uh, on the back side, I'll show you later, and that's where you're storing your Windows and all your workloads and files and whatever in games. You can just duplicate and clone that one into your new one. That's one way to go about it. Uh, if you don't want to do that, and if you want to like be me and Peter, we prefer to, especially when you're upgrading PC parts, you will uh, preferably want to have a clean new install. So yeah, everything, just clean on the new drive. I mean, that's also the most consistent way to have a problem-free new installment because you never know when something is going to conflict. You know, either it's going to be a small driver issue yeah. or some conflict with the motherboard connection, uh, anything. You well, especially, I mean, wouldn't want that. In our in our uh, scenario here, it, we are basically talking about a PC that's been sitting around there for, you've been using it for a couple of years um, and, and it's been doing fine, but now it's time for an upgrade. Um, so in that case, and even if you don't upgrade, but your PC is getting slow, or you know, especially the startup times, that can take a lot of time once you uh, use the PC for for a couple of years and you know install programs, uninstall them, blah blah blah. This will slow down the 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 startup, the boot process, and everything like that. So trust me, when if you do a fresh Windows install, that'll be the fastest thing, and you will every time you you uh, you boot the PC after that, you will notice it, and you will think I'm. Freaking glad I did this because it won't take, I don't know, like a minute or something to boot up. It'll just take a couple of seconds. So it's worth it. Yeah, so someone is asking if you can use SLI on this, in this case. So uh, unfortunately, no, you don't have the SLI capabilities here. But if you have like a custom build for yourself, uh, well, actually nowadays I wouldn't be really interested in SLI in the first place. So yeah, the M for some content creation, there's still some yeah. benefits, yeah. but for gaming the, the support for SLI is kind of, well, I, I don't want to say lessening, dwindling. I mean, it's it's becoming a bit less, even NVIDIA, you yeah. know, they used to support all the way up to four-way SLI or something. Now yeah, it's just kind of two-way and even, even for two-way. So it really also depends on which games. The games have to... Uh, support SLI as a game mode, and not all games yeah. do that. So, so you can get the benefits in every game or yeah. scenario. Whenever friends ask me for advice, you know, should I go for a, a cheaper, less powerful GPU and then buy a second one for SLI setup later on, or should I go for a more powerful GPU uh, in the first place, I always recommend the second, so uh, one powerful GPU, because also, SLI doesn't really scale. Uh, one plus one is not really two uh, when it comes to SLI. So it's there's always some performance that you lose. So it's usually just best 
cho choosing one GPU. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. even not considering any problems or troubleshooting you might cons uh, encounter when doing SLI. So, uh, or, or missing out on games because, or performance in games because they simply don't <laughs> Uh, support SLI. So it's usually just easier and better yeah. to recommend one powerful card. All right, so uh, before we continue, I already saw a comment uh, saying maybe it's time for the next giveaway because it's been a while. So uh, yeah, <laughs> maybe we, we can uh, make one more guy happy because uh, don't guy. worry, guys, if you haven't uh, won anything yet, uh, just go to this link right here, uh, msi.com. Com, that's uh, slash two slash insider and you can still have the chance after this draw to win one of this uh, $20 steam wallet codes yes so go there and uh, the more actions you perform the more chances you have at winning still one of the few uh, steam wallet codes coming up all right so our next winner is Kyriakos 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 congratulations, yes. congratulations. Uh, yeah. hope you fun with, have fun with it and uh, yep. buy something nice digitally Exactly. <laughs> we'll uh, email the codes out to you guys later this week. Yeah, so I expect it very soon. Yes. Um, if you have any questions in the meanwhile, don't forget to post it in the chat. Uh, yeah, They're I see there's a discussion best. about SLI going on. Uh, what else? Yeah. Might still be some hard <laughs> hardcore SLI fans out of there. Of course. Yeah. I mean, we've got hardcore uh, uh, hardware fans, so there's bound to be some people in there that, that still use it and love it. Um, but for most people, it's it's yeah not that common anymore. Um, somebody mentioned, I'm just scrolling up, uh, Arrow's Mind was saying, um, why would you plug in the M.2 after plugging in the <laughs> GPU? Because it wouldn't have just been easier to do the M.2 first, then the GPU, perhaps. Uh, but we kind of want to stick to the, the components and, and you know talk about one of them before yeah. we move on to the other one. Yeah, so just trying to work from the outside to the inside. Yes. Normally, if you would do a build, by the way, uh, which is what you see us do every now and again as well, then yes, you will see, you know before you even put in the graphics card, yeah. you put in things like storage, the, the CPU. Everything you know. on the motherboard first, yes. and then you put a motherboard in the case. Yeah, and then you put the graphics card in once it's in the case, because the graphics card also needs to be connected <laughs> to the case. <laughs> All right, so we just upgraded uh, our drive to M.2. And uh, on the back side, I'm going to show you, uh, because here you don't Which see view? any hard drives or SSD, 2.5 inch SSDs. That's because they're being hidden on the back side of the I case. See. All right. So I'm just going to unscrew the other panel and show you guys how you can upgrade these kind of drives if you're interested. Is there also a possibility to install liquid cooling? Uh, on this case, if I remember correctly, well, there is. Well, you have the right? room to install it, yeah. but you have to know what you're doing. Yes, and uh, it's. I think it's limited to 240? Yeah, two fans uh, on the top. Yeah, so 240 millimeters uh, radiator then uh, at the top installed probably, so yeah. this side basically, so you can do that. I think nowadays, you know, if it's really interested in all the all the ones, they are really progressing so well. Yes, but, and you can't really go wrong with a good quality one. But of course, custom water build is just it's it's heaven. It looks so. It awesome. is so sexy. Yeah, I know it's, it is. I just but you can't. have to know what you're doing. Yeah, I mean, you have to start bending stuff. You know, you got to get fire involved, and so oof, not the easiest part. Yes. All right, so three, three screws later, we have the other panel also loosened up. So here, let me show you what I meant. All right, so here we have a bracket. Uh, right now, there is a 2.5 inch SSD drive installed. So you can see the connectors here. It's one integrated connector, so not two separate ones that you're maybe used to in the older builds. Um, so if you want to replace this one or uh, you know just generally get a bigger one in there I mean size wise and well not size wise not physically <laughs> but you know what storage I mean right? Size. Storage size. So all about the size, just guys. have to um, <laughs> unscrew the screw so one right here if you just take this loose it's like if I, a click system so uh, once this is loose you can just like take it oh wait yeah it's quite tightly in there so I might have to use a bit of force. Well, it needs to be fixed in place, right? Yeah. So. Also, to prevent any issues with transport. Maybe there are more screws there. Because it, mm. it does feel like it's very tightly in yeah. there. Oh, there yeah. we go. So, like I said, 
Uh, this one generally doesn't get opened or uh, replaced much, so it got a little bit tight. <laughs> so you just have to use a little bit force to unscrew it. Obviously, keep your hand on there so you don't drop uh, the st drop the drive. Like you just did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shit happens. Right? <laughs> it does. It does. Uh, so if you want to replace this one, you have to unscrew the four screws on the sides. Yep. Then you can take this one out sure. and get a big run in there. So it's quite a good setup, I guess, if you uh, don't want to spend too much money to have uh, one main M.2 uh, SSD on your motherboard and then have like backup drives as this uh, 2.5 inch SSDs installed uh, on the back side. And even if you want, I mean, this is two and a half inch, so make sure that's, that's the size you can fit in here. But uh, I mean, if you want to go for more storage, but you don't really care about the speed, you can also do a two and a half inch uh, hard disk drive. I mean, those will probably be a bit cheaper when it comes yeah, to storage. Yeah, if you uh, just storage. want to store some photos, you know, old video projects yep. and stuff like yeah. that. Maybe. Although the SSDs, uh, SATA SSDs have really come down in price. So it's, yeah. I, I don't really know if it's, if it's still a, a, an argument to go for uh, HDDs over SSDs when it comes to two and a half inch. So if you want to do that, it's right here, and I'm having a little bit trouble to seat it back in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, I, it's like yeah, a, I need to put it down. It's so like it's a easier. Lip, though. I mean, you can you can kind of see. Uh, let's get a top cam view of that. Yeah. So it's really quite a tight lid that you have yes. to slide in, just like with the back side of uh, uh, the side panel. It's so a really same locks it system. Into place. Yeah, which is good. So make sure it's not uh, screwed in any way. So there click it in. Yeah, it's just a lot easier when it's laying on the yes. side. Yeah. That's usually also why uh, you see a lot of people when they're working on a PC, they'll just lay it down uh, flat. Yeah. So it'll just give them an easier time when working on it. But since we're trying to provide you guys with a bit of a service. That's the <laughs> curse of the stream, man. Sometimes shit happens. We always want to make sure right. we get things on yeah. cam. So one good thing about this is that the connector uh, is being fixed onto the case with oh. two screws. Yes. So you don't have to worry about, you know, uh, okay, uh, do I well, do I break the connector when you're like being too aggressive or perhaps even, um, well, it's, the it's connector just cannot, not really cannot a get problem. loose either. No. So no matter so, during transport or something, it's completely fixed in place. Mm, yeah. So it also can't wobble free or something so that you cannot access the drive anymore, yeah, so which is a common thing among some pre-built PCs, unfortunately. Yeah, so that's why you just have to click it in, uh, click it in and that's it. Yes. You don't really have to worry about, since it's also very tight right here, that you don't have to worry about sticking it into the connector. Yes. Uh, so you can see that actually there are more spaces right here. So if your specific model came with more brackets like this, you can obviously here install more, but you have to make sure that your power supply is actually supplying you with more connectors. Yeah. So if you don't have so you enough... Need, indeed, so you will also need the, the corresponding connectors in place exactly. here, so, or else you cannot connect drives. Yeah, and so this is going to differ per model and per configuration, so I can't really tell you which one will have how many, because they even might differ per country and region. So you just have to open up the backside of your case and see for yourself. Uh, just backtrace the uh, the cables and see if there are more connectors laying around. Maybe isn't it listed when you when you buy the PC? You get a spec sheet or something, which this which which yeah, so shows if, that. Yeah. So if you really have bought the PC, I mean, so if you compare it to the website, it's going to be different because on the website we list like up to yes, and yes. so not really specifically your configuration. So no. if you have bought it, then you should have come with like a, a manual where it will tell you, you know, how many connectors you will have yep. and how you can upgrade uh, what to. So also what kind of cables you will have coming out of your PSU. But uh, okay, so here... So I see first world problems here. Tobes, or I don't know if, if I'm saying this correctly, but Tob 3S or Tobes is saying, I literally have a spare 2080 Ti laying around. Wow. Would love to be able to use it. I, wow. I, I, I think a, a lot of people in this chat wow. would love to have your problems, my friend. Wow. And that's a first world problem if I heard any. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> I mean, yeah, some people just have the the first world problem kind of life. Yeah, that's that. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So uh, it's not for everyone, unfortunately. So what a problem to have. Yeah. Too many 2080 Ti's. Yeah. So we are here sitting around, you know, trying to sell our one of our kidneys to buy a 2080 Ti. <laughs> and you just have one spare <laughs> laying around. Okay. Sure, yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> At least you can go RTX on all the time. Yep, <laughs> no worries there. <laughs> so, all right, so yeah, we just did the, the explanation on the 2.5 inch SSD, but uh, like this, uh, this kind of case, we also have, this specific case, we also have a hard drive. 
underneath here for like extra backup space really for stuff that you don't really care uh, about the speed for so if in your configuration you still have one and you can of course opt to upgrade it there's it's being placed into a bracket that you can uh quite well i have to put it on the side but i'll show you later <laughs> so you can take this out and then you can replace it or well you know peter just mentioned you know nowadays the prices of you know 2.5 inch ssds have come down so much yeah i, I might even just you know not even consider the, the, the old school 3.5 inches a well, 3.5 inch might actually be cheaper. I'm not sure about 2.5 inch hard disk, but yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I, I checked and it's really cheap right now. I know, that's, what, yeah. that's the thing. I, for me, it's always, if it's just a couple of euros or dollars difference, I would just go for the faster option because to yeah. be honest, that speed you are going to notice. So that is yeah. money well spent. Um, and that's the thing. If, if for me, I always make the decision if I spend money, I want to notice it. Um, oh, yeah. but, that, but that's my own thing, you know, so <clears throat> that, that means I will spend money on things I will use a lot uh, or I will really notice a lot, like speed um, and, and, you know, startup yep. speed, loading speeds, because that really is one of the most annoying things if you have to spend hours or well, not hours, but exactly. just, any so... time spent waiting. It's too much. <laughs> so, you know, one of the perks of technology moving forward nowadays is that, you know, this kind of old technology, which is still quite useful in cases, uh, even <laughs> the big ones, you know, they really you're, drop you're in price. You're talking about it like a, like a history show. <laughs> it's not well, old in, technology. In the, in the technology <laughs> world, I guess that's how fast it goes, right? Uh, every year there's like new stuff. So stuff like this is like almost antique, the, the hard Th drive. Things our, our archaeologists uh, dig, <laughs> dig up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anyway. Uh, so yeah, if you want to replace the hard drive, uh, it's really easy because it's being uh, installed onto a bracket and that bracket is uh, being mounted. Yes. Let me show you right underneath here. So right here, it's being placed into like a vertical bracket. Yeah. If you can it's see got it. Three, three slots, right? Yeah, if three, I see it three trays, one, yeah. two and three. Yes. So if you want to take it out, uh, it's really easy. You just have to uh, touch the side hinges. Just click the side hinges and then take it out. So of course, first of all, you have to remove all the cables. So the connector, the power connector from the PSU and the startup connector to your motherboard. Once you take these two out, so all you have to do is slide it out. Oh, so that's uh, one of the little <laughs> bracket that is being installed yep. to. Which actually is not even, uh, well, it doesn't need to be screwed in because no. it's being held in place once you slide yeah. it in. So it's that easy. And take this out and uh, replace it or just take it out and never do anything with the bracket again. That's also possible. Yeah. So I just want to show you that's how easy it is. Um, Stefano is asking, uh, is, are the PSU and motherboard upgradable in this model? Yes. Um, we're not going to do that today because, well, yeah. to be fair, we don't have time for it during this stream. Yeah, but it's also, let's say, not necessary for this kind of build because the no. Infinite, they, also, they always come with a very powerful uh, CPU. So in this case, like we have 8700 and in the seventh generation, even older, there's like a 77, um, 7700 yes. uh, Intel Core CPU. So not really necessary unless, of course, you require a lot of mini uh, M.2 uh, slots on your motherboard and they don't have it then yeah, in that case, you might have to upgrade it. So a but it's up to you. <clears throat> um, it, it's up to you. And yes, it's possible. The short answer. The long answer, John just gave you. <laughs> yep, but you don't. Ha you do have to be careful, you know, to find out what kind of size uh, fits into this case. So in yes. this particular case, it's going to be a micro a a ATX. Yes. So really make sure you don't mistake that part. So yep. I'm just putting the art drive back. Yep. All right. So that's the other side where all the drives are being hidden and of course the PSU. So like Peter always said, you can also upgrade this PSU if you need it. Uh, it's a regular size PSU, so um, you don't have to, you know, uh, mind the cable management, so you have to, well, work quite a bit for the cable management. But besides that, yes, just upgrade it if you really feel it's like it. It's also one of the big advantages of, of having uh, one of these infinite cases, basically, is you can, you can keep up upgrading them pretty much like a regular build, yeah. um, like a regular desktop. Even though we're trying to give you more features like the silent store cooling where yep. you can have a better heat dissipation. So yeah, that's for the drives. And on the front side, 
OK, so another thing that's um, worthwhile of being uh, upgraded is that in your old models and configurations, um, uh, you might have come with like a single memory uh, DIMM or a dual DIMM, but the speed might be lagging behind because it's like a few years uh, old. So in this particular case, uh, let me show you. Maybe you can move it a bit closer and then yeah, we can... Uh... Let's get closer. Get closer. So we have the regular four slots. Uh, memory lanes right here. So first thing you notice is that they are colored like... The, the, how should you say this? Uneven. It's like white, black, white, It's black. like color coded, yeah. I guess. Yeah. So <laughs> of course, when installing memories, you might be thinking, What's 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 the fuss? You know, just take it out and put in new ones, then that's it, right? Uh, well, not really. So because when you're trying to upgrade your memory, there are actually quite a few rules that you have to know about. Um, so yep. First of all, you need to know, okay, where do I actually stick in the memory rims, uh, dims? So say you bought a dual kit. So right now we're going to use the HyperX dual channel uh, kit. So say you bought this kit and it's not like you just take them out and stick them in and that's it before uh, before even knowing <laughs> where you have to stick them into because so this is like a uh, like most of the models a daisy chain uh, setup for the uh, the memory lanes so it works like for a dual channel it'll be faster and it's good for overclocking of course in some cases you also have the t to the topology setup that one is good when you have like when you're using four dims so then it might be faster well it's faster than the the dual setup from the daisy chain so in this case you also see that they're being color graded so yeah white black white black so that's for a reason like peter also uh, said briefly before the live stream like well they did do it for like a reason right so yeah they, yeah it's not because they they happen to have these colors on hand or yeah. something it's <laughs> actually done for a reason uh, which is to kind of indicate that you have to um skip one slot basically when you're seating the the ram so let's take out the old one the old one is being seated in the second one so uh in this particular uh, particular case uh, in some old models, you still have to like open up both hinges. Mm. So in this one, we just have to open up this, uh, the upper hinge. So this, uh, the, uh, the underneath one is fixed. Uh, so this, this model also has one single dim in there, right? Yeah. yeah. So just click on the hinge and carefully take out the card. Yes. As you can see, it's a green PCB. That's, yeah, why, uh, so that's why you don't see it. <laughs> <laughs> it's becoming invisible because of the, the chroma key. <clears throat> Of course, when you're trying to install the memories, uh, you also, besides you know, knowing where you have to stick it into, um, also have to know about the compatibility issue. Well, it's not an issue, but the compatibility. Yes. So now you have to look at you know, your motherboard uh, to manufacturer's instructions to know, okay, what your specific kind of model will accept, what kind of uh, memory speed. And that's not the only thing, because you also have to look at what your CPU might be able to, uh, or is able to uh, accept. Yes. memory wise what so it's for compatible speed. With. so the compatibility yeah. Yeah. with your motherboard and your cpu is really important here you can't just randomly buy the like the, the fastest memory that you see on the market no. and be like that's it for me and i'm gonna go for that you gotta make sure it's compatible with your system yeah. or else you won't at, at the very least you won't get the most out of it uh, but it might still work and if you're unlucky it <clears> won't work at all because the uh, cpu won't be able to recognize and work yeah. with the memory in that case so uh, it's always recommended you need to check for it's both the motherboard so we've got a motherboard uh, qvl list uh, which is basically you know qualified vendor list with, with all the uh, memory compatibility uh, it's being tested we put a hell of a lot of time into this these days uh, for for motherboards in the past it, it used to be well let's just say not so good uh, so that's why we spend a lot of time these days to make sure it is um, and of course the, the the cpu also needs to be compatible so like josh said make sure that the cpu that you either have or you're getting that you're upgrading to um, that you are aware of which type and speeds of memory uh, are compatible are supported um, because yeah once you you, you buy the the ram kits basically and you find out crap it's not supported you have a problem because you, you have to buy another <laughs> kit and you know rma so yeah so that's save. <laughs> we want to save you that grief um, and make sure you you make the right choice before you actually buy them. That's always uh, preferred.
Yeah. All right. So just uh, a little bit in between, uh, we're getting greetings from our colleagues in our Dubai office. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Hello, guys. We'll see you next week. No. <laughs> <laughs> but how do? I don't know. With Corona, we could fly, we could fly out to them. I don't know. Uh, we'll visit sometime. Live on the edge, huh? Always. <laughs> yeah. So, all right, where were you? So, yeah, you got to know where to stick them into. All right, so in cases where the motherboard, uh, the, well, the DIMM slots are not being color graded, you can still, in most cases, find out on the motherboard PCB itself, somewhere near the slots, there's going to be um, something written like an A1, uh, B1, yeah. uh, A2, B2, and they're being like drawn to each other. Lines. So you will know, yes. you know which ones should be paired with which one. So in this case, Usually the memory they will be sold in a kit. That's for a reason. That's for dual channel like uh, benefits. So you will know. Okay, these two will need to be in the second and the fourth. If that's still not your case, you need to be able to find in your motherboard manu uh, manual. Uh, there's also going to be a uh, well clarification on how you should use the RAM sticks. Yeah. And in this case, I'm, I'm noticing something while I'm looking at the camera that you guys are seeing as well. Is that the cooler is actually blocking uh, one of the, the, the white slots. So that's also a pretty clear indication that you're not supposed to use those, at least not if you're using a uh, dual channel. Yeah. And if you still want to use four uh, DIMMs in this kind of case, uh, well, like Peter said, the, the cooler is kind of blocking it. But if you look deeply, if you look, well, really to the side. Ah, there you go. You still have some space to uh, really squeeze it in, so there's... Uh, if it's, it's not too high, if it yeah. doesn't have a heat spreader that goes up too high, you can actually still fit it yeah. underneath so there. It's not like uh, you cannot install the memory stick, yeah. but so let me just install the first one. Of course, yeah, something else, if you're really novice regarding this kind of stuff, is that there's like a cutout in the middle. It's not really in the middle, it's more like 40% <laughs> left in this case and 60% right. You gotta make sure that this really aligns with the yeah. slot itself. So sometimes, uh, you know, because generally when you're using this, uh, while trying to install it in the first place, you have to apply some force. So don't apply too much force before aligning this uh, well the proper way, because yeah. then well, bye bye memory stick. It, well, it's quite hard to do that, but still, yeah. I mean, well, there's if you, yeah, if it's, you're it's, too it's much kind force. of like USB. You, you might have to turn it around like two times before you get it right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So once it's in, uh, you know, you can easily just push like the, the, the bottom part first or the top one, for, it depends on yeah. whatever you want. So click on either end, then make sure it's really tightly installed and then just go on to the next one. So in our case, uh, it's the uh, second and fourth one, like uh, majority of the options out there. All right, click, click. I think you heard that. And um, there you have it. You have your memory installed after careful considerations of whatever models is uh, compatible with your setup. And the fun part with memory is that it, you can overclock this quite easily with your BIOS if you have like done a little bit of homework nowadays because uh, with the majority of the modern ones, actually, you don't even have to uh, be able to do this manually because there are like XMP uh, profiles that you can just activate in your BIOS that will automatically you know, apply all the settings to overclock your memories to get you like the optimum speed for uh, the pair that you have. So free performance out of stuff like that. Yeah, that's, that's always good. Yeah. And I mean, these XMP profiles are, are predefined to uh, give you the best result basically with uh, paired with the, the, the CPU that you have as well. So it's always kind of recommended. I think we did some tests uh, a long time ago. We had some, some benchmarking. Uh, with a build where we also upgraded it. Uh, and this was more about the CPU, I think. And so they did a benchmark before they upgraded, and they did a benchmark after that. But after that, it was actually, uh, the score was lower than they expected. And during the stream, they couldn't really figure out what it was. Uh, but what it was was because they upgraded a component, uh, the BIOS was reset, which also means that the XMP profile was uh, disengaged, was, was disabled, uh, which means when they did the benchmark without XMP profile, it actually made quite a bit of difference. Yeah. So that's just an indication to show you that it is definitely worth uh, uh, yeah, enabling the XMP profile, making sure it's, it's compatible and, and it works correctly. It will get you more performance. Yeah, so uh, I just found out about a question uh, Samrat is asking. So as you can see, yeah. We did mention this before, but if you just joined, uh, no problem. 
the GPU is like really kind of uh, aligned with the side. Oh, sorry, panel. sorry. Yeah. I, I thought you wanted to, the <laughs> top view here. No, my bad. But yeah. um, so, but don't worry because the side panel. So as you can see, indeed, if we if we just look at it like that, yeah. But it the side stick panel out. has the cutout spec uh, specifically meant for the GPU for it to breathe. So yes. even though it's really wait, 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 close, you can, you can leave it here. I'll, I'll yeah. do the top cam. Then you so can the see. original question was, uh, yeah. isn't it bad for the GPU temperature because it's so close to the side panel? Well, if you have like a closed surface right yeah. here, then yes. Like a, like a tempered glass panel, for example? Yeah, but in these kind of cases, the tempered glass kind of cases, uh, it's not the same as like the, uh, the original uh, side plate because yep. it's going to be lifted. There's going to be room between the tempered glass and your case. That's specifically for your GPU to breathe. That, if you have that's still less good though yeah, if, if the course. GPU is uh, pressed up against the glass pretty much because the fans, of course, will, will when they spin, they will try to grab air basically from a uh, 90 degree angle. You know, from from all, from all the angles basically. But if it can get it from right there. It's mo usually the most effective because it's it's trying to push the air down into the uh, heat sink anyway. Yeah, exactly. So, so that's why this solution is actually perfect. You know, it can just grab air straight from outside of the case. Yeah. I mean, life is like sometimes all about making choices. Huh? It's like, hmm, you have like the beautiful tempered glass, but it might be yeah. not as good with temperatures as this one. But if you have this one, it's not as aesthetically pleasing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's life. I see somebody, uh, Edwin is asking, where are the RGB options? Is there an RGB header? <laughs> well, I, I do see a strip on the side yeah, so here, in by the way. In this specific case, yeah, we do have Maybe uh, the RGB headers, but I don't no, actually know it. how many there are on this specific motherboard. Oh, you can actually see it. So yeah. underneath here, this little strip, this is actually, a, a, well, an, at least an LED strip. I'm not yeah. sure if it's RGB, actually. It's RGB. It might be, okay. Yeah, this one is actually RGB, yeah. There you go. So yeah, the motherboard has the RGB header, but I'm not sure, to be honest, how many. Yeah. So I'll have to take a look at We're the gonna... motherboard myself in order to tell you if you're really interested to know uh, how many or where. Yeah, I mean, and you can, I think you can look at it because this is a normal motherboard, right? If you just, yeah. if you step, take a step beside, if you, if you Google uh, or Google, if you look at the website of this motherboard, the B360M Bazooka, you will find out Bazooka. there it should be listed how many uh, RGB headers it has. I, I don't know, uh, probably Mike, if he's still in the chat or Eric might know this mm. uh, by heart. <laughs> I'm, I'm more of a yeah. graphics card guy, so motherboards are really not my area of expertise. I know some basic things, most basic things. But anyway, yeah. So that was the question. That, that's what they uh, made spec sheets for. Else. That's that, that's for me. <laughs> Uh, I have Amazon Infinite with 2070 RTX armor and i7-8700, which upgrades are possible? <laughs> well, for your specific kind of case, um, if you, you can definitely go to a, a 2080. And if you want to, well, even 2080 Ti, depending on how big your PSU is, but depending on uh, if I see your configuration, then I'm going to say your PSU is, should be 650 watt. Uh, it really depends on what you want to upgrade yeah. as well, because you're saying which upgrades are possible. Well, I don't know. Um, um, you have an infinite with that, so it's kind of like I don't know. Is that it's it's a is it a similar build like this, or is it like the, the yeah, infinite it's, it's there? A, it's similar to this one because it's the eighth generation. There you go. But okay. I think it's like the infinite. I think you could... X. And, no, no, no. It's the infinite a eighth. Should be that yeah. one with that specification, but. But it does it still offer all the, the upgrade possibilities of this one? So basically yeah, you can yeah, swap yeah, yeah. The, the GPU, the power supply, yeah. the so, CPU, the motherboard, pretty much everything, yeah, really. The, the internal setup uh, with your model is like 100% still the same. Yeah. So, but it might be, you know, the different, the motherboard is different. Of course, you have different configuration, but yeah. the, the, the principle is still the same. You have like the M-sized, uh, well, micro AT, ATX-sized motherboard, uh, vertically integrated GPU with a uh, Samsung cooling panel in the middle. So everything what I just showed yeah. you is still going to be applicable for your case, but you just have to make sure that whatever uh, upgrade you're trying to do, for example, if you want to have a bigger GPU, if it actually fits in your case, because I'm not sure which GPU you have in mind from uh, which manufacturer yeah. or even which model, whatever like that. And then, of course, the power. So with your setup, you must have the 650 watt uh, the bronze PSU. So from 2070 to 2080, I'll say you can do it, but I wouldn't try any overclocking with uh, afterburner, even though it's very easy. 
And then other yeah. possibilities, yeah. Well, I, I mean, know. you can you can upgrade storage, you can upgrade yeah. uh, RAM, you can upgrade pretty much, pretty much I, everything. And that's I showed the thing. you. Uh, and even if you if you don't have enough power uh, for, to upgrade because you want, for example, one of the 2080 Ti's of uh, Tobes, who, who has one spare apparently, um, then you can upgrade the power supply unit. So depends on how far you want to go and and how many components you want to uh, swap out. And but basically, whatever you want, pretty much everything is possible. Yeah, <laughs> that that's kind of the. The answer yeah, there. So uh, what I tried to show you, uh, well, what we tried to show you here were like the, the, the easy kind of upgrades that yes. you can just do within like minutes. Um, of course, you can also go die hard, really replace everything, but that's of course up to you. But we're trying to show yeah. you the easy uh, upgradability offered by the model, by the Infinite series. And mostly how, you know, and this it's a, it's a simple case of uh, how to take this PC with the components it has and make it uh, more Future proof or well, more uh, suitable for, for 1440p gaming. That was <coughs> the goal for this stream, yeah. and kind of just one scenario. Of course, you can do a lot more things, uh, but that was specifically what we were looking at for yeah. today. So, trying to get like an older, uh, older Infinite model to perform close to like the newer Infinite X with yes. like really the top specs, like um, you know, uh, i9 9900K and 2080 Ti. So of course that one is like the gaming beast, and if you have the older version, well, this kind of with this kind of ways you can still keep up with you know the, the gaming industry, you know, getting um, better resolution and bigger monitors, yeah. and if you have like better gear on uh, on your mind that you want to have, yeah. well, this kind of way is how you can you know, get around that kind of issue because, like we said, you know, the CPU in the infinite models are always very powerful, so. Yeah. When you're upgrading resolution, you don't really have to worry about the CPU because that's usually not going not. to, yeah, usually not. Yeah, so yeah. that's not really going to be your bottleneck. It's really going to be the heavy working GPU that's, that's going true. to do all the work. So Stefano was actually saying, he was the guy who was asking uh, what he can upgrade on, on his Infinite. Um, and he says uh, he wants to upgrade to a 10 a, uh, sorry, 2080 Ti uh, mm. and then an i7 9700K. And RAM with uh, 366, uh, sorry, 3666 megahertz. It sounds like you'll probably need to upgrade both your, your motherboard because you, you mentioned you have a B360 in there. So probably want to upgrade your motherboard to yeah. a, a little bit of a higher end. Um, especially with the K model, you know, you want to have better power supply. Well, well yes. the power faces. Uh, and especially with the, uh, yes, and also your power supply unit probably because you, you're going for... Uh, an i7 quite high up and a K model, so I'm assuming you might want to uh, overclock it, uh, and a 2080 Ti. So both those are, uh, will draw quite a lot of power, especially the 2080 Ti. So yeah, we would also recommend then that you upgrade your power supply unit while you're at it. So uh, yeah, you're looking at almost a, a complete replacing of all the major components in your PC right there. Yeah. <laughs> kind of, but that's possible within this build. Just make sure that for a 2080 Ti, like we mentioned, that you get a model that's actually uh, will fit in the case and you can still close it. So like a Ventus, like this one, this is an actual 2080 Ti Ventus. Yeah, this so one this one should actually fit. fit. Um, then you should be fine. But if you take one of our gaming models, for example, which will be thicker, you won't be able to close the case. So mind that. So yeah. it's possible but choose the right components. Yeah, and again, so uh, if you want to upgrade to the 2080 Ti, you got to make sure that even though it fits, you still got to make sure that the power connector is there to connect it because yeah. uh, this one, that one is going to require a double uh, 8, eight pin, pin yes. instead of just a single eight pin, which is available in this yeah. specific model. So if you're going to upgrade the power supply unit, make sure, and probably it's always best then to go for a <coughs> modular unit, which means you can decide which uh, connectors you actually uh, use and, and uh, put in there. So that means also you can leave out any connectors you're not using, uh, which saves you room in, uh, and, and time in cable management again. So. Exactly. Hope that helps. So, all right, we have installed everything. Uh, now I'm going to show you how you can just easily put back uh, the silent storm cooling mid panel. So now we just reverse engineer what we just did uh, an hour ago. So before you stick it into uh, the screw holes, let's say align them, you have to make sure you first uh, oh, that there. Stick this through. Let me just make this a little bit easier for myself. So once this this one is through. You can try to lower the panel so that you have enough room to stick this one into the PCIe slot again. 
So again, this is going to be easier once you lay the PC down. You flat. can do that if you so, want. Let me just do that. do that. Save you some time. Do it like the pros do it. <laughs> <laughs> so this way, once you have aligned it, just uh, try to use both fingers and then try to click them in on both sides. Yeah. And again, carefully, you, don't apply too much force. Yeah, once you hear the click, it means the hinge is up. Just control it one more time. Check it if it's up. Yeah. It's up. And uh, it's set. And now you just have to realign the mid panel with the screw holes and then try to get screw all the screws back, in place. which I still have. Wow! All the screws. So, I'm not sure what you were talking about at the beginning. What? <laughs> <laughs> so, again, this one hole on the back side. Let's just start there. So, make sure you align it first and then So while you do this, do you mind if I uh, draw another winner? Oh, it's time. I think it's time. Well, wonderful. Okay, so you can still participate. Uh, go to msi.com slash two slash insider, uh, as you can see right over there. Uh, or go to the link spammed by our bot in the chat every now and again, uh, the Gleam link. Um, our next winner, <laughs> that's, very, that's very funny is using my name as a nickname. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, so me, Peter, you won. Congratulations, Congratulations. Peter. Yeah, this is no joke. This guy actually, did, did guy, you, guy or, or girl, I don't know. Did you uh, just invite one of your friends to do I this? Have, no, no, I have no idea. I thought, I thought it was, maybe it was their idea of a joke. Um, I, I don't actually win, to be fair, but um, yeah. And I, I don't want to mention their real name because, you know, privacy. So, uh, yeah, I, I hope the person who, who put my name in uh, as a joke knows, um, knows who, who they are. But congratulations. Um, yeah, probably still give away one more code uh, later in the stream. And let's see, we, we have some questions. Uh, Kyle Hendricks said, did you answer my question? My computer crapped out. I'm sorry. I mean, the chat moves quite fast every now yeah. and again. Uh, we, we, we're live streaming on different platforms. So all the questions end up in the same uh, chat window for us. Um, so if you can repeat it, that will be perfect. And we can, we can see if we can get you an answer. <laughs> it's rigged, very much rigged. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I was really looking, I was like, what? <laughs> what? I didn't participate. How did my name get there? Did you know? No, I didn't. That's the thing. So I, I don't know how my name got in there. It is well and truly rigged. Sometimes that is the case. Yeah. So, well, first screws later, um, we have our silence door. Toes, when installing dual place. channels, should I use DIMMs 1 and 3 or 2 and 4? Usually it's 2 and 4, but you just if you're unsure, always check the, uh, the manual or uh, on the board itself. It will usually also tell you there are some small print on there. Yeah. So uh, wow. Wow, we have everything now installed, quite sexy. I don't even want to put the side panel back on, so. Yep. <laughs> For the cooling, yeah. it's best to do yeah, that. I mean, right? <clears throat> our gaming X series, I just really like, uh, you know, this, this mm. kind of brushed metal mixed with, uh, you know, the, the carbon kind of look here, yeah. the print, it's just, yeah. I think and it's too good to be covered. So. And there's some that's LED just me. there as that's well. That's just me. Do, do you have a, like a glass panel laying around? <clears throat> no, actually, that's not recommended because then well, it might Well, I can not always get take off the one from the Infinite X. <laughs> uh, are you sure you want to do that? <laughs> <laughs> Poor thing. All right. So, uh, all right. So we have done uh, the GPU upgrade. So going for like a 1070, which is uh, which like right now on average will play around 50 FPS on 1440p extra. Um, <laughs> extra. <laughs> We have upgraded from that to the 2060 uh, Super. Yeah. So, like again, this stream is uh, really about showing you the process of what you should do and the tips and tricks and the yeah. answers from uh, on all your questions. So the GPU is upgraded uh, with the 2060 paired up with like the 87 uh, 2060 Super paired up with the uh, 8700. You can expect like around 80 ish. Uh, FPS uh, yep. on average. So again, you know, some games yeah, maybe we might perform better. Charts. Maybe we can pull up the charts yeah, to it's, show. It's still here. So there we go. With the RTX 2060 Wow, uh, your super. head is cut off. Let me see if I can fix that. That's why I felt the pain. Yeah, man. You got a headache? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there we go. 
So like I said, around 80-ish, so 70, 77.9, so let's say 78. But again, some games, you know, it might perform around 100 FPS. Some yeah. games, it might perform just around 60. It really yeah. depends on what kind of title, right. how well optimized it is, and if it favors the red team or the green team. A lot of factors, but on average, this is the uh, performance that you should get. So with the CPU like 8700, you can expect that for 2060 Super, it's not going to be a bottleneck at all. Um, so yeah, with this kind of upgrades, especially now we also have the RAM speed up and going. Yep. So instead of eight gigabyte of uh, 2400 megahertz, we have now uh, we have now uh, 16 uh, gigabytes of uh, 3300, 33, 3333 megahertz. Uh, so really everything within this rig, what we can easily upgrade, we have upgraded. Also the M.2, so for yeah. extra better loading and the system working speed. And more capacity, of course, so you can yeah, actually more fit capacity. more games on it maybe. maybe yeah, I mean, that's... nowadays the games are kind of crazy. Just that's the thing. remember back in the days when they fit like on a CD for like 8 gigabyte <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or a DVD. Yeah. And now there are like 100 gigabytes and plus like, wow. Maybe they're working hand in hand with uh, the drive manufacturers. Or yeah. am I just being a conspiracy theorist I, I right don't now? Know. Probably you, you need to remove <laughs> I'm just, your I'm just aluminum joking from your head. I'm just joking around, guys. I'm just joking around. Yeah, so that's uh, for the front side, also the RAM. And uh, well, the CPU, we didn't have to touch like we said. And on the back side, we also showed you how you can easily upgrade your uh, 2.5 inch uh, SSD drive or the uh, 3.5 inch hard drive. So even though, again, the Infinite is not um, your setup or your desktop, what we have explained, it's still going to be applicable because we also told you what you had to, what you had to, uh, you know, be, a uh, be careful of. And so, you know, what kind of rules you have to be aware of when installing RAM or yeah. GPU, you know, the sizes, power connectors, enough power delivery, and what kind of, um, and what kind of, yeah. Support. Yeah, the support yeah. for the memory. Compatibility. So a lot of stuff you have to be care of, uh, yeah. careful of. And well, this is uh, more or less how you can easily upgrade your uh, Infinite model. Yes. No matter which model you have, because the Infinite series, they also have, uh, they all have the same structure when it comes to the internal. So uh, let's see if we can if we can get Kyle's question because he he did uh, make an effort to post it again. Um, he says, "Yeah, yeah, of course." For for those that mount their GPU horizontal, the power connectors will be next to the side panel. That's correct. Um, so it will be basically uh, facing this way. Um, is there a way to sort of move the ports or manage the cables better? Well. Mostly there's not. I mean, I have seen some some uh, connectors, kind of a, like a 90 degree connector that will kind of um, move the ports from the front, the, the top side, let's say, which will be sticking out on this side on most PCs, to the back side. So instead of sticking out this way, uh, they will stick out that way. Um, so, so towards the back, but that's pretty much all that there is at the moment. I mean, it's it's kind of like just the uh, the standard of how it is now, and it wasn't really a thing until, of course, people you know wanted to see inside their case with <laughs> the glass panels, yeah. and, and then you actually see them. Uh, but if you have a case that's actually closed and and you don't even it's not glass panel, um, if you were worried that that the uh, the cables are getting too close to the panel or maybe even touching them. Don't worry about it. It's all insulated. Uh, unless you really jammed it in there, it should be fine. Um, so there's no no need to worry about it. Uh, but since you're asking about you know managing the cables, I'm assuming that you have a case with a glass panel or something that you want to look into. Uh, I mean, the thing I've seen there is that you can get cables, especially with modular uh, power supplies. You can get cables in you know with different sleeving, different colors or something. You can kind of make it fit in with the build a bit better, but there's really not that much um, that you can do to really, really get rid of the cables. The only thing you can do is kind of, you know, make, make sure you tuck them away um, as close to the, the graphics card as possible uh, into the, the cable management holes in the, uh, in the case itself, if, you're, if your case has them. So that's the best thing you can do, unfortunately. Yeah. <clears throat> so someone is asking, will there be a DVD player? <laughs> How do you mean, will there be? Yeah. Isn't there one on that? Thing? It is right here. Yeah. Do, you didn't new, expect do that, the did you? The ones still have that, by the way. Do you know? Well, not from the Infinite X anymore, but the older ones, they still yeah, have it. Yeah, yeah. So the so new ones, actually, they don't have it anymore right because, here. Let me show to you. be honest, most people don't really use them anymore. Yeah, you wouldn't expect it because we uh, carefully, uh, you know, intelligently kind of 
hit this in this kind of triangle-ish form. So this is actually mm -hmm. the DVD player. Mm. The more you know. Yes. What keyboard are you guys using? Well, different ones, actually. Um, I'm using the GK60, which is a mechanical keyboard using uh, cherry switches. Cherry red, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and Jazz using a uh, GK70, which is a 10 keyless or TKL. Yeah, this is really my format. If yes. I mean, I it have, have the quite a few one. Yeah, I, I just... Also a mechanical keyboard, by the way, with yeah, the but cherry I mean, switches. Yeah, the bigger ones just uh, I don't really like to use it because my mouse, uh, well, both my arms are not really well that spread. So <laughs> if I'm using them, you know, the, the, the extra space I can use for my mouse. Yeah. yeah Personally, yeah. you know, I prefer the 10 keyless uh, keyboards. That's nice. Uh, Tobes is saying XMP is grayed out of my BIOS setting. Is that normal? I, I don't know, it depends on uh, what kind of setup you have and if it's it might be a compatibility issue. You might also have yeah. to check if there is maybe a, a, an update for your BIOS that can sometimes help, that, that uh, compatibility has been made available later. Sometimes that happens. Uh, so you can you can check out different things, uh, but it's worth troubleshooting. Yeah, and uh, the last thing that you might not want to hear regarding your question is that your uh, memory sticks might not support XMP. Yeah, it's, so, it's also a possibility. Yeah. I mean, it's it, most of them do, I think. Yeah, but mm, the modern ones, especially, they usually yeah. do. But you might not, not sure. So you have to check the memory stick itself, and then yeah. just see, you know, if they're compatible. And uh, mini keyboards like talking. I don't believe we have mini keyboards yet. I, I, right? If you mean, I mean, the smallest one we have at the moment is the uh, ten keyless. Uh, but if you're referring to like sixty percent, which is even smaller, you know, yeah. the really smooshed together keys. Um, no, uh, we don't have it. Maybe we'll, we'll look into those for the future, but for now, um, no, we don't have them. Uh, <laughs> I need an optical drive to play my CDs and uh, still install Windows 7 on DVD. Wow, <clears throat> why would you go for Windows 7? I'm intrigued. Because wow. they stopped support for that as well. It's, yeah. it's supposedly not safe anymore, unless it's a PC you don't really connect to the internet, but I don't know. Imagine that, a PC that no, doesn't connect I mean, to the internet it's, it's possible. If, if it's a PC that you just use for, I don't know, uh, you know, like a like a, a home server or something that you, you only use in on, a, on an internal LAN network or something. I don't know. Could be. Maybe you have like a, a home um, IP cam <laughs> thing going on. That's possible. Yeah. And maybe a tip to just, you know, uh, try to get the content on your USB stick and try yeah. to boot up from the USB. I mean, that's much easier. Usually, that's, yes. Yeah. That's, uh, or you can always have maybe. like a, an external, uh, they, they do that these days, right? Or these, they've always had uh, that. With a USB cable that you can yeah. connect. Yeah, in external yeah. drive. So, you know, even if your PC doesn't have it, uh, or even if you're using a laptop, you can still, you know, um, use yeah. just DVDs Get or that CDs. one out whenever you feel like it. That's even more useful. Is that a real background set or a green screen? So we knock something over and prove that it's real? No. <laughs> uh, we will see that as a compliment for our designer. Yes. yes. We'll tell him that. <laughs> it, is, it, it looks pretty sweet though, doesn't it? It's, yeah. Um, <clears throat> Yeah. I mean, uh, I think Lucky is also there somewhere, but I'm blocking it, I is think. Yeah, oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, right yeah, there. yeah, yeah. He's hiding there. Yeah, yeah, it's right there, the little guy. <laughs> <laughs> I think he lost weight. Yeah, he might, might yeah. have done. He's, he's smaller than I remember him. All right, All right, so, so uh, yeah. Um, yeah, we've elaborated on the performance, uh, what kind of setup that you can uh, upgrade, you know, uh, what kind of GPU we get, what kind of performance in 1440p gaming, because, of course, it's getting more and more popular day by day. It's kind of becoming the new standards, you know, compared to the 1080p a few years ago, and uh, a lot of questions. We appreciate that, uh, you know, the interaction with you guys. Uh, if you have any more questions, you can still ask them now. And well, if don't, then uh, I think we'll uh, make, make you guys happy with the last winner of today's giveaway of uh, Steam 2011 code. I was already. Let's see if we've got oh some more God. jokers. Let's see if somebody used your name this time. <laughs> uh, that would be nice. Nope. I'll, I'll give him double. Nope. Mm. We've got uh, pup. Pup. The next winner is pup, oh. as in like a puppy, but pup. Oh, a P -U -P. puppy. Pup. All right. Uh, congratulations on winning a twenty dollars Steam code as well. Um, yeah, that's, uh, I think that's it for, for the Steam Coast for today. Yeah, so next time better. And uh, next week, yes. we'll be having something quite interesting. If 
if if if we if get, we can get all it. the technical yes. aspects worked out because it's going yeah. to be quite a complicated yeah. uh, live stream that you're not used to from our uh, from our live streams. The idea is that we're gonna look into uh, the state of VR because VR. I mean, it's been a couple of years, right? I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. A couple of years ago, everything was VR and everybody had to get it. It was the new hot thing, and yeah, then it was quite a big boom. And, and then, then uh, you know, <laughs> during the past couple of years, it's 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 gone a bit more quiet. I mean, it's still there, obviously, but I don't know because at that point, a lot of people I heard, you know, they got the headset and they were like, "Well, I got it and now. I've played for a couple of days, and then it's like, well, there's not that much content yet, so I keep just playing the same demos and stuff that I like, and that's kind of it." Yeah. Um, so we're going to look into it and, and tell you, uh, you know, about the content and if there are any new revolutionary things you should be expecting. And of course, uh, it's kind of tied into uh, a new big game that's coming oh, up yes. quite soon, which is a VR game. So it's uh, Half-Life Alex, which is a full VR game. Um, yeah. and if everything goes according to plan, we're actually going to play it. The thing is... We might have to do that stream with more than one person because I, I don't know if we yeah, can handle... It's going to be quite a pain the, in the butt. I, I don't know if we can handle <laughs> playing VR for, for, for you know longer than one or two hours in a row. Um, so we'll have to see. Yeah, we know Eric will get uh, kind of sick. Uh, sick yeah. So let's see uh, what kind of challenge is going to be. We'll see. Maybe yeah. I heard you were nominated to, to give it a try. Yeah, yes, guys. Uh, I was uh, nominated to uh, be uh, the uh, victim. Well, either that or the hero. That's what I'm trying to make of it. Huh? <laughs> so uh, next week, I'll try to get you guys a lot of uh, efforts uh, yes. and show you guys you know, what the state of yeah. VR is all about. And we're going to try some qu uh, yeah. quite a nice uh, yeah. setup with the yeah. VR. We're going to do it ourselves. If everything works well, so fingers yeah. crossed for us. And um, that's it for today. And thank you very much for viewing. And I hope you guys learn a lot and that we were uh, fun. Yeah. And uh, hopefully see you next week. And, right, yeah. Have a good day, guys. Thank you for watching. And see you next week. Goodbye.